Hi, welcome to Angel Theory and SES Financial Engineering. Um, free, uh, this is the paper I'm currently working on. It's called S World Super Economics and Audacious Idea. It is from the Angel Theory Paradigm Shift series, as seen on this website. And we're looking at book two, A More Creative Capitalism. And uh, just below, we can see the systems design. Okay. A very quick skip through the history. Um, long time ago, 2011, uh, an idea based on chaos theory, based on a property development, and based on software. That ended up a year later as American Butterfly, which comes in four parts. The theory of every business, spiritually inspired software, the network on a string, and the butterfly. In book one, chapter eight, s -World UCS, we started s -World UCS special projects. These are eight projects that um, would help, help the world uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, three years later, on the Angel Fury website, this list was recreated on the 24th of November, a very special day in the calendar, and um, refined into 16 different special projects, global cooling, universal knowledge, Spartan contracts, global healthcare, limiting antibiotics, African rain, their oceans, Middle Earth, the population point, Spartan theory, and universal colonization. And of course, Mars colonization first, care of Elon Musk and others. Okay, uh, a little bit later, 30th of Jan 2018 to be precise this uh, a new list was made up and this time it was found out that all of this can be done as a ripple effect of creating a city or cities in locations of extreme poverty such as Malawi and here we explain start to explain some of that this has now been superseded by a new book, 64 Reasons Why, and in fact it is the second book in the A More Creative Capitalism series. Uh, the first book being the book that we're uh, describing now, the SES Financial Engineering. Um, in this chapter, we go through the different projects and subdividing them into different causes, etc., etc. Every single thing in here is big. It's not small. It's not small things here. They're all big initiatives, and 64 of them. And in fact, there's actually now 100. This work is a little outdated. Right. Okay. So let's. Uh, before we go there, uh, one of the uh, papers written, maybe the main paper written in that book. Uh, 64 Reasons Why and More Creative Capitalism is a paper that uh, looks at growth theory versus climate change. And we're uh, looking at the Nobel Awards, of course, from last year. Sorry, this year. No. Uh, the last Nobel Awards, anyway. Won by William D. Nordhaus and uh, Paul Romer. Paul Romer's uh, famous for um, startup and charter cities, um, which basically are a very good idea, but they have bad PR. The idea is to then put the 64 reasons why on top of his initial concept and create something that would be popular and has good PR and can actually happen and can deliver change and massive change at that. Um, but the problem is when you grow things, you tend to increase the carbon emissions. So how can you have both happy? Well, we'll see that uh, in, in, in the 64 reasons why. Certainly there's, there's a lot of e ecological uh, points in there. I think over 25. 
And one is that each city must be uh, net zero. I must create less carbon dioxide than it did before. Now that's quite easily done in a country like Malawi where most of the land is dried farmland because you can return it back to its pre-forested um, condition. So, and that's that's the deal for the for the cities. One of the we could call it the first law of S world is that when you build a city or a town, half of that must be returned back to nature reserve, which of course makes for a much nicer place to live anyway, and helps us protect all the animals, which was the very first uh, special project. Okay, so let's get to the spreadsheet. Okay, here we go. The SES equation, version 5a. And I call it high octane financial engineering. Why? Well, it's financial engineering because, in the same way that in America, for if a, if a bank's got a billion dollars in, in cash, it's allowed to lend out nine billion. Therefore, in America, that's uh, 17 trillion or whatever they make. You should really push that back and say it's not 17 trillion at all. It's 1.7 trillion or maybe 1.9 trillion. But it has then been increased. You understand? The point is, another point, this this way of doing economics is is dangerous if more people uh want money than there is money in the bank you get a bank run and we we saw the chaos that caused 2008 2009 2010 we don't want that to happen again but unless anyone's got a new idea of how to uh do financial engineering then there's there's not a lot of options for people. Interest, inflation's always zero. Um, but, <laughs> of course, we can do it my way. Okay, so let's have a look at my way. So, we're going to go straight, straight into the detail here. This is what I call the res calculator. Now, I know it's SES, uh, but it used to be res, and I haven't got around to changing it yet not on every single one of these there's 250 cells and this 250,000 cells in this spreadsheet it's not a spreadsheet as you imagine a spreadsheet this is a design for software and it's very easy to create software if it comes from a spreadsheet um, so instead of me who's got a billion dollars or uh, someone who has a billion dollars putting that into a bank and that bank lending 9 billion out what we do is we change the amount of times that money is spent in a year so that the money is always there but it's being spent more times therefore it makes more uh, cash flow so revenue or savings is times by efficiency and efficiency is set at 90 percent here so we start with 6.3 billion and after we've times it by the 90 percent e efficiency we have 5.6 billion okay that's simple very simple spin one gets spent within a year this is basically very similar to the plumbed pipe image. Paul Samuelson, care of Kate Raworth, from the first edition of his textbook, Economics, in 1948. The book that uh, everyone sees as the book. Okay, so nothing new here other than we can see we've got a spillage of 10%. So in this... Uh, in this economy 10% is lost so what you've got to make sure is you're filling it up by with at least 10% and uh, if we go here 
We can see for exports and trade, I've really put nominal figure. I just I've just put a million in each, just for the sake of having a figure, so we can uh, later put something different in. Real estate sold, reasonable figures should be able to do that given the scope, given the software. And here we're selling entire cities to Norwegians, maybe the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund, one billion a year each year we will see I personally expect we can do a lot more than this given that in this model that we're looking at there's only four cities made in the entire time previous models history number two saw 16 different cities okay but anyway the point is we add this from trade we add this from real estate we add this from the city uh from norway rather to build the city and the businesses and etc uh plus a million a billion in aid gives us 2.3 billion and that's basically this little tap here we've now got 2.3 billion and if we actually look here this is initial investment so that 2.3 billion adds to that 4 billion making that 6.3 where it starts to get interesting and where it differs is in the year that follows just quickly this is the cash flow for the year half of that cash flow i've said is gdp i said approximate guide um, David H. Moss's concise guide to macroeconomics made the point that uh, GDP is not the sum of all the cash flow, not the sum of all its parts. It is whatever is sold and the uh, parts that were made from it, you don't include that value. That's already included in the house. And I did some figures and it worked out to be about roughly half. So if you have a cash flow of 5.6, you're likely to have a GDP of about 2.8. It's a, an approximation. Um, from this 5 billion in uh, cash flow, government spending allocation of 18.75%. That is just over a billion. Labour receives 1.4 billion. 25% of cash flow goes to labour. But in what I call tax symmetry, 12.5% of what labour receives could also be classed as government allocation because it is welfare, but the welfare goes to labour's village or family and village first. So labour. Labour's spending it, but it's saving the government from spending it. And 25% of Labour's 25%, being 6.25%, goes on building Labour houses. And that could also be instead of social housing. So there we have tax symmetry. Everybody's happy because Labour's getting what they want, government's getting what they want. Bang, bang, bang. And after you've included, you've taken those two there, about half of the money left is used for parts and stuff. Anyway, the important thing here is this bit here. This 5.6 billion, which is the last on the totem pole, or in this case, the only, is savings because the network has spent it with other companies in the network, therefore the network still has 5.68 billion left. So at the beginning of next year, and we can see I put it here, the LCR, the Law of Conservation of Revenue, inspired by Hawking's description of the Law of Conservation of Energy. Thank you very much, Professor. Right, year two, and generally it wouldn't actually happen like this we would probably start with a spin of four but it makes it easier to see it year by year spin two things change because instead of that money 
which is now increased to 8.5. So let's just work. How, how did that increase? Okay, we had the uh, savings from last year. We got a little bit of uh, trade, roughly the same in uh, real estate sold, same for city sold. Add all that up and it comes to 8.56. So, but this time 91, so leakage is only 9%, making a nice cash flow sum. But this is spent before the 11th of July. Actually, it, you know, it would be the end of July. This is just a weird mathematical formula and it says 11, not, tw not 31 or 30. Uh, but anyway, the point is the money's spent twice. The money's in the bank. That money's definitely in the bank. And when I say in the bank, I really mean in the bank. I, we don't want any money transfers that are electronic. We want the cash in cold, hard currency. And ideally, we'd make a big deal out of it, make a big, giant glass pyramid, nuke-proof. And in the middle of that pyramid, there'll be blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks of money so we can always see the money's always there at any one point all the companies you know before the 11th of july this is how much money there is if everyone wants to be paid they can be they can't be because we won't let them because that would spoil the system but the principle is, should everybody want to have their money, it, the money is always there. But the money is spent twice within a year. Each time causes uh, leakage. And of course, the more times you spend, the higher you've got, the, the less leakage you can have. But we've doubled the cash flow here. So we go down here and the cash flow is now 148 GDP is up to 7.4 billion and you know this isn't much in comparison to what we'd be getting from the deposit rate technique i.e. Our, we're 174 uh, percent increase to money supply whereas if you had a billion put it in a bank that bank lent it out nine times that would be 900%. So we're nowhere near 174, but we're only at two spins. By the time we get to about eight, nine spins, we start to create more money than can be created in the current US uh, deposit system. Uh, plus, sorry, but of course, the money is still always there. Unlike the US, and it's not just the US, it's everybody. <laughs> You know, England, Europe, they've all they're all leveraged. They've all all their banks have got a little bit in set reserve and a lot out there in the world. This banking system means the money is always in the bank. We're just changing the spending times. We're just saying instead of it going around in a year, we're going around in half a year. Increase savings here. Get uh, take it over to here. And this adds up again here. And this time we're spinning three times. So this 10 billion, 10.5, 92% equals 9.7. So that is money that has gone to other companies in the network. And in general, we're looking for a, a symmetry between all the, all, all the companies. So as all of that 10 billion actually ends up pretty much where it started from each time we call that uh, Siena equilibrium you can find it later on down these tabs should you wish to look at it okay we can start to see the idea now of course we change spin to four five seven eight nine where are we 2032 we call 2032 Angel City 2 no, Angel City free. And Angel City free, we start the second of the outsourced cities. We're at spin nine, 
and E is now 99%. Has to be high, has to be this high because of the amount of times we're spinning it. If that, if that decreases, there we start losing money each year. It's all about increasing the savings. SES, -E savings, not revenue. Savings times efficiency times spin. It's all about increasing the savings. So as long as the savings go up each year, you're good. A note on uh, history number two. We I hit, I hit us with three different recessions, with depression, all sorts of things. It, it, this 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 battles its way through anything. Okay, so hey, what can I tell you? We keep doing it. We keep doing it. We keep doing it. We go to 32 spins. Here we go. So 32 spins. That basically means at this point there's 108 billion in revenue that is spent within 12 days and then again within 12 days and again and again and again and again every 12 days so it's a really hyper uh it's a real fluid economy now and at all the time this money is in the bank it's always in the bank it's in the bank it's just in the bank two weeks later you know and note that e is 99.5 um, is that a monopoly? Yes, probably, if not for the fact that this isn't one company. This is thousands upon thousands and thousands of small companies. So it can't be a monopoly because it's thousands and thousands and thousands of small companies. It's an economy. Um, or you could argue, it isn't, is monopoly a bad thing? The reasons that I can see why Monopoly got such a bad name is because the people who, they were a bunch of Nazis. Um, J.D. Rockefeller wanted to sterilize people, the poor, you know. I also note that uh, it wasn't long after the uh, the trust busting that America had the Great Recession. So, you know, I mean, really, maybe the trust busting, the anti-Monopoly was because of the fascists. And it actually was a quite good business model, you know, probably. Certainly if it's, you've got all the quality measures that uh, that are packed into this. And for, of course, we're not looking at the 64 reasons why at this moment. If you want to read through that, please read through the PDF. Um, I'm not trying to make that point here. Uh, just trying to make the point that we can make the money. Okay, right. Zooming down, zooming down, zooming down, zooming down. Final total, $8 trillion in cash flow, $4 trillion in GDP. But it's not like that because the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the world has increased. Um, but what is relevant is the radio, ratio, the GDP ratio. Uh, Malawi's share of global GDP now 1.8. One, just over 1%. And that was what I targeted for in manual history. For history number two, we got there in, 20, in 2048. In this uh, version, we get there in 2080. Um, this, so, you know, this is a, a worst case. Um, things change, however, if you change the, uh, the growth and relative to massive swings, actually. Um, not going to get into that. What I want to get into is this. Okay, so African rain. How do we change the weather? First, that was the first special project as such. Sienna's forest has been around for a long time, and that is the key ingredient as to uh, why growth theory can be good for climate change. If for every mile you're developing eco cities you're also returning a mile back into forest so let's have a quick look at um, the results so we've seen the percentage of global GDP here's how it got there this is interesting Spartan homes built Spartan homes Sparta is just the name for the workers um, most respectfully um, it comes from American Butterfly. Uh, the bottom line is by 2080, 10 billion, 10 billion, not 10 billion, 
10 billion would be ridiculous. Uh, 10 million homes built. Over 10 million homes built um, for a population of, at that point, probably 40 million. Um, of course, there'll be private housing as well. So, you know, if you no one's doing anything like this. No one's thinking they can house their, every single one of their population in nice housing in the third world. They're not even thinking it in the first world. But this is how this is what happens, you see. Financial engineering. <laughs> okay, another one. Another reason why. Uh water. Using the same figures. Again a six point two five percent allocation. <laughs> it's roughly, roughly one point three million US dollars for the Adelaide desalinization plant that supplies 250,000 people so with 2 billion per plant and 7 million 7.7 uh, point, point 7 billion of that being solar panels so you don't have any electricity costs this is how many plants can be built and that makes water for 60 million um, which is a lot more than is needed so actually only 2.1% of network worst case scenario uh, 2080 results um, is, is needed for water. Okay, so just some little navigation issues of the site at the top. Uh, growth, uh, sorry, GDP growth. These are the controllers. Everything in purple is a controller. So if you change that to 105, it changes the whole thing. Uh, here's how you change the E if you want to change it in 2032 or 2048. This is just a breakup of potentially, potentially how the initial investments gets made. And notice that's not just that's the cash flow needed. Before that's needed, there's a lot needed to 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 build the infrastructure, etc. Um, probably another twice as much as that again. Maybe a lot more. I don't know. Um, okay, here's a repeat of the homes built and the um, the uh, percentage of GDP. Here we see 16 of the special projects from 64 Reasons Why. We we'll quickly go to the right and see so we've got one. Spartan contracts, two global cooling, two advanced human potential, global healthcare, African rain, cities of science, angel wing, the theory, economic theory of everything, universal knowledge, advancing human potential again, S World Food, S Siena's forests. And here I've got four for the next people who 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 jump on board and want to make their own history. So what I want to do is go through this with an economist and, and various, you know, one with a developer and we can talk about the development struggles, one with a real estate uh, broker, you know, to talk about the, the, the real estate prices, etc., etc. Lots of experts drilling down, making their different um, histories. And I'm going to name them all, history free, this is history free. The next one, which may be Kate Raworth, it might be history four. History 5 might be Steve Keen, Lee Chanzen, William Nordhaus, Kenneth, Kenneth Gilliam, Paul Rome, la di da la di da la di da la di da Lots of Nobel Prizes, lots of excellent physicists, and at the very end, lots of very significant people. Right. We're going to just go down here. The 64 reasons why. And here's the donut, which is an interesting uh, way of looking at this. We're going to move to the. It's it's just it's a very elegant way. It's by Kate Raworth, and you should read her book, The Donut. Uh, it's a very elegant way of summing up the 64 reasons why. If you so, if we set, if you imagine these 64 reasons why are split between ones above the ecological ceiling and ones in the social foundation, and our system, S World, manages to pull them all back in. Not, you know, some of these, you know, they're 
we need to add not everything has been thought of but a lot of this stuff here you know it doesn't really matter what it is it, the, the general point is the money that can extra money that is made using the SES can afford to pay more for the same sort of thing but an eco-friendly version of it and a lot of these things in the middle here are special projects in fact they're all special projects health yeah every single one peace and justice haven't got that one actually uh, well we've got the spartan theory anyway uh yeah all of this stuff got to get pulled into the donut all of this stuff on the outside got to get pulled down into the overshot so the shortfall and the overshoot needs to all become into one and that is basically what i'm describing it's just this donut makes it easier for others to uh, to quickly picture it here's a continuation of the uh, of kate raworth's this is her distributed network which uh, means it, it's, it has advantages um, in distribution similar to her design we saw up there is our design from 2012 here we can see our network though is actually a cube cube is more efficient financially and it can mitigate rounding errors i.e it is unchaotic uh, here's some of the software ideas going back to 2012 here's that same idea in 2016 starting in its circular fashion here is that same but now s world angel wing economic software framework and we're all we're all focusing on this bit here now number 10 the res equation that's what this video is all about um there's a bit of the physics same same concept different uh different perspective and here we have the chaos theory combined with the uh the string theory and the quantum mechanics and all the software etc and lastly oh no not lastly here's the microeconomics for the sequence network which is the prototype and lastly we have the 64 reasons why okay so i think we've i think we've done it and i uh, really hope um, we can start a conversation have a great day